welcome to the show with no name podcast. I'm Renee Garten and I'm joined by my regular co-host Darcy Lussick and today we welcome in Renny Matua. Welcome. Thanks, Ren. Did I get that? Did I get the surname right? My tour. My tour? Yeah. Well, it's very important that we say, say it now, especially mm. we've just come off the back of multicultural round and I've known you as Renny Matua my whole mm. life, not my whole life, probably the last 10 years. Just, yeah. Enough. Enough, Enough that it's felt like a lifetime. My tour is actually my grandfather's first name. So ah. it's not even my title name. But don't ask me to say my title name because I'll stuff it up. No, I'm going to. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I've had three pints. I'm not doing it. <laughs> um, I already get accused of being a plastic salmon, so I'm looking at something now. Have you had some work done? Or? Work? Yeah. On my face? Yeah, you just... Why? Am you I just, shining? I mean, yeah, you look... He's look not well. aging. He, he doesn't no, age. No, he's not it's weird. aging. Yeah, it's weird. Renny's a so, year older than me and I look yeah. about five years older than him. Mm. So I just want to know what's your secret. Um, <laughs> what is it? I don't know what it is. A lot of alcohol and um, good times. Good yeah. times. <laughs> good times, Keeps good laughs young. and good Keeps people. You young. <laughs> they call me Peter Pan. I'll grow up one day. <laughs> Have you just had poor people around you, Darcy? Is that why? <laughs> oh. Every week I just get hammered on here. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sorry. I should start off with it's great to see you. You've got a big right. smile on your face. <laughs> yeah, it's it's always a pleasure, Treasure. Weekly uh, podcast with you. But um, you've wrangled in Rennie because yep. you guys have had a, a long time together. Um, and it's because we mentioned a couple of times on the podcast, Toronto. Um <laughs> So today on the podcast, last week we actually covered off um, the breakup in relationship between the Lussick family and it was really nice. It was like an Oprah moment. We brought them back together. And this week <laughs> we dive deep into Toronto. It started before Toronto. Yeah, so, yeah, so I'll actually tell you a funny story. First time I re <laughs> met Rennie, right? <clears throat> this is so fitting, right? Oh, so I just signed for Parramatta. When I was at Manly, and um, no one, no one knew, and I was out in the cross one night, and um, <laughs> and the people I was with said, "I want to go home." I said, well, "I'm not going home." So I I went to um, I think it was piano bar or something. I walk in, and Rennie's there, who I think was by himself as well. <laughs> <laughs> Two <laughs> peas in the pod. Yeah, and I thought, you know what, this is we are meant to be. And I went up to him, and I was like, "Hey, Ren." He's like, "Hey," I said, "I'm coming to Para next year," and he said, "I'm like, oh yeah." And I was like, "I need." Show me a bit more excitement, you know what I mean? It's like me when I start the yeah. show. With you. I was like, get a bit excited, please. Yeah. But then, uh, yeah, that was the first time, and then we we um, we had a good year at Para. Then. We're no good together. Yeah. Well, did you? The question is, did you guys stay out? Like, did you join uh, forces on that night and stay uh, out? And that was where yeah, the bond. Have, yeah. First of all, I was surpri I'm surprised I was allowed in piano. But it was usually. So, like secondly, sapphire. do you remember this? Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Most of, I've forgotten most of my kids. I was actually born in Kingsville. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. So yeah. I was, it was a homecoming. Like, Just to 20s. be fair, guys, there is a hospital in and around mm. that area. No, no, really. I, was, I lived on Bayswater Road for the first two years of my life. My dad was a, a musician. Live music was in the 80s, yeah. early 80s. And uh, it was only fitting that I'd um, come home to the cross in my 20s <laughs> and parts of my 30s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't told this story. Tonight. <laughs> I haven't told this story. So, um, dad, dad never drank ever. Mum never drank. And uh, they. Where met. did it all go so wrong? <laughs> well, the kids, the four kids, made up for it. Really, mm. so the whole, the, all the siblings, and uh, so mum said, you know, you know, when you were born, like dad was obviously in the live music scene. Uh, I think it was, he used to play at maybe the, the Tal Offer Club or something like that. It was called. Because your dad's someone and Someone's, your mum's Australian. Mom's Australian. Yeah. They met. I think mum was a bit of a groupie up the cross. <laughs> the flowing red hair. Strawberry blonde. <laughs> and um, mum said that dad used to come home from a gig four or five o'clock in the morning. And uh, obviously I'd been up all night. I was screaming and crying. So dad would take me up, back up the cross because he loves Space Invaders. <laughs> he just sit there just playing computers all morning. But he'd give me to the prostitutes up there. <laughs> <laughs> and all the prosies used to look after me. Like, I'd find space invaders. And I was like, how fitting is that? So that's that why I've got all these issues. Uh, so, yeah, like, really, I was born, I lived in Bayswater Road for the first two years of my, my life. And um, dad was a good person, great parent. 
He was just friends with people that worked yeah. in the same area uh, as him. Basically, mum said the prostitutes weren't on heroin back then, so they were happy for They were, they were clean. They were clean. They're... The old clean prosies. So, yeah, there's me uh, King's Cross story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where do we go from here? Talk- <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Uh, Darcy's trying to work out how he went to Joey's yeah. and didn't actually grow up in your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was, uh, You were a Joey's was, boy, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, any similar stories like Rennie's? I was protected over there on the northern oh. beaches. You know, we were protected from reality over there. But um, so know, where I, did that I, lifestyle start? I actually, <laughs> I actually tell you, uh, last night I was laying in bed and I was actually thinking about Rennie, right? <laughs> Whoa! And uh, <laughs> you know, when in in the so was it two thousand and four? You really come on the scene there at Bulldogs, yep. yep. two thousand and five. So I was thinking, you, when you when you came in, you guys sort of cha- that team that you had. You guys sort of changed the perception of the NRL players, where you come in and you're a bit flashy. You know what I mean? Mm. You had the flashy haircuts yep. and the bling, and like you, you sort of change it from the um, boring yeah. people, you know. And so I went to a private rugby union boarding school, mm. and I remember in '05 I went to the barber and I said, "I want the Rennie Matua haircut." <laughs> You know, with the with on the sides with the mullet at the back, and and I went into school on Monday, and they said, "You're not coming in here until you get rid of that haircut." Oh, I'm just ready to a haircut. You know, like it's sort of you guys come in, you know, Sunny, you, yeah. JT. So in JT, those, yeah. Well, JT couldn't have the shave size; his ears were too big. <laughs> he had to hide his ears. But um, in those days, remember Beckham had that haircut? Mm, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we're yeah. all big. And we grew up in the 90s, so we loved the hip-hop scene. Yeah. And then Beckham was, he had that haircut. Um, and we'd all get haircuts before every game. Me, Sonny, Tong, <laughs> Mace. <laughs> it got to a point where we were putting Dax. Do you remember Dax? Yeah, Dax was <laughs> real <laughs> thick wax. Oh, okay. And we'd all be like, just before, especially a Friday night yeah, game. Yeah, knew everyone game. was watching. And we'd be like pushing each other out of the way just to put Dax in our hair. Just be in stylish. The shed, before in the sheds. Just, yeah, in the shed, <laughs> in the mirror, before we go out you and murder someone. Oh, no. Maybe didn't, you didn't times. go that far into the Rennie haircut. Oh, yeah. It was like concrete. Yeah. Just <laughs> like, well, in the under-20s, right? Because there was only there would only be two, I think, two games a week in the under-20s that would be uh, televised. So if you had a televised game coming up, you'd, you'd three sure weeks you'd... you go, oh, I'm, I'm getting my hair cut, I'm putting the Dax wax in and stuff like that, and then... So yeah. No Can I ask about. a really female, or not even a female question, but just putting hair product in your hair when you're sweating mm. and constantly, like during the game, you're rubbing it. There are so many questions I have. Mm. Hands in the eyes, hands on football with the amount, like that stuff. It like yes, concrete. it's grippy it to your hair, but leak. like it did not leak. It was that thick. So like, I don't think I dropped one ball. <laughs> A handful of Dax. Okay, was, Dax, if you're watching, uh, sponsorship. They don't even make it anymore. Yeah. Oh. It was, I think it was made out of kerosene or something like that. It was, it was that thick. It Products was, used elsewhere now. So, mm. I'm sure there's a can around the, the house somewhere. Maybe if you find it, that's a mm. massive fa- Facebook marketplace. Absolutely. A little couple of dollars in it. Talk to me because you, you grew up as a South Sydney junior. Yeah. South, yeah. Yeah. Um, why did you ne- – we never saw you – went to Canterbury. We never saw you play for South or Roosters where a lot of the locals basically went during that time. Yeah, I, um, I, I gave footy away in my mid-teens. I was too engulfed in the, the beach culture and I just loved surfing and um, I'd been playing since I was four years old and made a lot of, like a few rep teams growing up yep. and having a Polynesian father who's quite – pushy um kind of made me rebel a little bit against the game and um i remember coming home one day saying to dad that i didn't want to play anymore and that didn't go down too well um so i gave it away and then i came back or let me rewind a a fraction so i went and trialed with matthew shield and a parent complained that i was too young when i made the side so they got me off with South. I was that was I was pretty upset, especially when you're coming through the grades. Like yeah. every that means everything to you. Um, gave footy away, not purely because of that decision, but it was just going a different path, probably the wrong path. 
um, and then decided to come back. South were out of the competition. They had a flag side still. Played a year of flag. We got beat by 60 every week. And obviously Braith and I are really close and he sent uh, the scout out to one of my games. Um, just so happened to have a good game in that particular moment and Canterbury sent me a contract. It was probably worth about five or seven thousand dollars. At the same time, South were marching through the city trying to get back into the competition. Uh, they get back in, Craig Commons, the coach, and I'm at TAFE, probably one of the only times I've ever turned up the TAFE. <laughs> and uh, he calls me and says, Rennie, we've got a contract for you. You're coming to South. You're in the top 25. He's fifty thousand dollars for you. And I, I said, Tugger, I've just signed. Just signed with the Bulldogs for five grand, and he hung up on me. <laughs> and that was the best decision I ever made. Yeah. I was still, yeah. you know, I won a grand final two years mm. later. Would you ever have gone into music? Like, did music sort of flow through your veins? This is the thing. So, Dad played guitar in the church in Samoa, left, ended up in, in Auckland in a band, came to Sydney, and he was studying at the Conservatorium of Music. So genius on the guitar, could play piano, percussion, all of it. Um, but it, none of the kids were interested in, in music. But we wow. grew up around music. Yeah. Well, I grew up with aunties and uncles and everyone was auntie and everyone was uncle. Yeah. Band practice, we'd go to gigs. I remember dad, you know, carrying us inside after a gig, three, four o'clock in the morning. If we went to a gig with it, we'd be backstage. So we grew up fully immersed in like the Commodores, the Eagles, Stevie Wonder, like all the old classics mm. and dad was just so into music, but not one of the kids picked up an instrument. Not one of us. Wow. I remember when I was about 20, 21, I said to dad, I want to learn guitar only because I wanted to impress girls, <laughs> you know, you know Look how I mean? that like, worked out. <laughs> you know, he always, yeah, you hate that one guy that can play guitar. Yeah. I want yeah. to be that guy that everyone hated. And he said, if you're going to learn guitar, you got to read music. So I put the guitar back down. I said, no, I just want to learn. <laughs> <laughs> I said, not a chance, mate. I just want to learn a few chords, <laughs> you know, maybe hit a note here and there. And, um, but I regret that now. Yeah. There's two things I regret uh, not picking up from dad when dad was still here was music and the language. Yeah. And um, music for me, like I love music and I've been around it my whole life. But the other love was obviously sport, but I should have learned the guitar. It's not too late. It's not. Just don't have the patience for it. But how are your hands after boxing and footy? Like trying oh, well, to. Well, <laughs> that finger, like, that's as straight as that finger goes. So, um, yeah, I don't have patience to learn something now. What's probably, um, both of you guys have really authoritative figure dads um, in terms of they were very stoic about how they taught you, how they were in your life. What's probably been the best lesson that they taught you that you actually accepted? Well, his old man doesn't like me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No, because no. no, my, my dad used to have all the security up the cross. So, like, he would. Oh, so, like, making sense. So, like, when I was in high school, like, dad would come home and he'd be like, oh, fucking Bulldogs players, Renny Matura and stuff like that. I, I caused him a scene up there and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, it's shocking, you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, Fast forward a couple of years, cut. he sees me and Rennie together. He goes, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> These two together. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we uh, – uh, What was your first encounter of Darcy's dad then? <laughs> you... Oh, John. It was, it was a... <laughs> um, <laughs> Look, I never hurt anyone else. I was just a little bit cheeky, you know. Like, I would always be amongst some... – well, I'll tell a story about one of Darcy's dad's friends. <laughs> All right, so we're at a popular water, watering hole in, in the cross and I got politely asked to leave. Mm -hmm. And the person who asked me to leave, um, I found out had played first grade before. And it's not the person you're thinking of, <laughs> all right? <laughs> anyway, so I was a little bit upset about that. Then I found out he played on the wing and it's still <laughs> not the person you're thinking of. It's okay. still not... Who we think now I'm lost, okay. So I was filthy. I was like, that was like a little bit of that bloke kicked me out. He played first grade on the wing, like of all fucking positions, just the way it all went yeah. down. Then I went back the next week and just let him know that I knew that he played on the wing, <laughs> but um, 
yeah, I think um, I'm surprised I'm still able to walk all these years <laughs> later. I'm, I had to go and apologise for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and but, but obviously you've mended the bridge between you two. For, yeah, we, for the dad to allow the friendship to continue. Nah, he's right. He, he just he gave up on me a long time ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know. No, yeah. well, look, the thing with going back to your, your original question with my old man, I was really, um, growing up, he was really hard on the kids and I didn't know why. I just thought, you know, why has he been so pushy and wanting the, the kids to be successful? And it wasn't until probably in my late teens, early 20s when – um, one of my cousins told me how hard my dad's upbringing was and like hard, like yeah. proper hard. And, uh, and that's when I understood that he, all he wanted was the best for his mm. kids. And it made me soften, uh, my, my emotion towards that. Yeah. But when you're growing up and you're in Sydney and you're, you're thinking like, I don't, maybe I don't want to play footy and I don't mm. want to, don't push me into homework. Don't push me into this. But I understood now that he did not want his kids to go through what he had to go through mm. to get in a position that he now had four kids, you know, we got a roof over our head, a loving father, you mm. know, loving mother, all the siblings, we, we get along unreal. So if anything, dad, I probably, I owed that to dad yeah. for being hard and you feel sort of hard done by when they're being so mm. protective, but, um, and pushing you towards something you might not want to do. But it took years for me to understand why he was the way he was. So I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Darcy, what about yourself? Yeah, similar to Ren, um, you know, when your dad's so hard on you and at the time you think, you know, why is he, why is he carrying on like this and stuff like that? And you, We've also heard last year, last week that he yelled a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, he yells a lot. But, um, you know, you think, oh, you know, at the time you think, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about, blah, blah, blah. I know how to, I know how to do it. I'm fine. And then, <clears throat> but you, you realise that, um, you know, it's coming from a good place. They just want the best for you. Yeah. You know, I see it now with my brothers, how he's still, he's the same as he was with me. He wasn't just me, you know. And even today, I think, I wish I listened to him more. Mm. You know what I mean? Like my life would probably be so much easier right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, you, you, um, you do kind of deject a few things, yeah. right? Like I, my mum watched the podcast last week oh, yeah. or the short where you were talking about your dad yeah, being yeah. a lunatic yeah. and her response was that was my dad yeah. getting yelled at by my yeah. pop. Like my pop, uh, he played for Canterbury. He was yeah. like all my, all the Gartners all played mm. for Canterbury until dad and he drove dad, they were the, like, they went to Manly. So dad, mm. dad was the first gardener to play for Manly. Yeah. But he was a swimmer and a footballer and every day he would take them down to Manly Lake. They had to swim, then they'd yeah. take them to football training. Like he was so yeah. harsh. And even when, you know, I mm. was born, I, I was the only female in the family that was born out of all yeah. the blokes and I was driven just like yeah. dad. And dad was like that to me. It was just like little athletics on Saturday. Yeah. Sunday was nippers. Then it was netball mm. and athletics throughout the week. And you get the shits because you're just like, yeah. I just want to live. Well, like, especially when you see like, say and... when you're say a teenager and then you get into that age where, you know, your friends and stuff are going to parties yeah. and stuff. And then, well, you're going to train. And at the time you think, fuck, I just want to, maybe I want to do that. But then, little, yeah. but then, you know, you look in the, in the, in the future, you're like, you know, down the track wall, there's been you know, three of his sons and we've all played NRL. Or yeah. my yeah. So, you know, there's a method to his madness, you know what I mean? But he still does my head in. Yeah. 34, he's still telling me what to do and stuff. Right. So I, <laughs> I've just accepted it. I've I accepted it. That's, just, that's just it for life. Yeah, I don't I do. Yeah. I, look, I have tortured him over yeah. my life, you know what I mean? Like I have put him, um, caused him so many headaches. So the fact that he still even speaks to me is a miracle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it does. It comes from a place of yeah. love. It's just the fact that they they just don't know how to deliver their yeah, love. Yeah. You know? And you, as you grow up and you get older and your friends might be doing other things, you, you mm. find that you're getting, well, the way I took it was I'm getting picked on. Like, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean. It's, it's a nice moment when you get to that adult moment where you switch and you, res you go from mm. resenting your parents for riding you and, and pushing you and driving you to being out of respect mm. that they were actually doing the driving mm. and the motivating and, and keeping you in the right lane 
and at the moment where you become kind of best mates with them, you go from yeah. them seeing them as a, a parent to going, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't for you. But mm. when I was growing up through all those times that I didn't want to borrow of it. I don't think I sat down one-on-one -on -one with my dad until I was in my twenties. You know, you respect them, but you fear them. You yeah. Know? I always try to hide from dad, um, probably for obvious reasons <laughs> <laughs> but you know dad's he you know english was his second language he came from a, a little tiny island in the pacific trying to make the best for mm. life he could possible for not only himself but meeting mum and his kids so i look back now and think far out i, I put dad through hell too mm. and, yeah. and and mum especially mm. so as you get older like hindsight's a beautiful thing yeah. you think, oh, i could have done this better i could have it's it's the part of life it's yeah. the journey that we're on mm. and it's and for me like i don't have kids but i want to be the best example or i can be yeah. for my nieces and nephews you know there's i'm a great uncle my niece has kids there's nine kids between um, my siblings they've all got three 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 and even when sometimes i do these podcasts I, when i say things i always think back oh shit to go to high school now. Mm. Mm. I'm not saying too, anything too like. No, but you know they're going to listen. They're going to yeah. listen. And uh, but it's it's about being a good example for them as well. And and my my siblings are all great parents to their kids. Um, yeah. So you know I've got a niece that's like killing it in footy. And I'm like, not another one playing. <laughs> LW. And a, and a. And my nephew just went just went to Palm Beach, Corumba, and he's doing well as well. So the my tour name might be uh, around for a little while. Does it excite you to know that in the past, if it was your sisters or, or cousins playing, you know, they'd always say, "I want to be like your Darren Lockyer. I want to be, I want to be your Braith and Astor, your Rennies." Yeah. Now they actually have females in the game to say uh, who they want to play like and and a whole nrlw competition to play for does it excite you seeing your nieces now following in that pathway 100 percent. so my sister sent me footage of my niece playing in a central coast competition and she fucking killed it and i was like well she doesn't take after any of you <laughs> she clearly takes after her oh uncle. you're claiming it <laughs> <laughs> but i was like for me my initial thought was i need to go up to the up the coast where she lives and spend more time with her yeah to teach her to carry the ball in the other hand and fend with that hand and that was my initial thing like i got a little bit competitive i look you made that break but you had the ball in the wrong arm so, so you became your dad pretty much <laughs> <laughs> Credit. Not as bad. Dad used to walk up and down the sideline. I could see him out of the corner of my eye. But that's like, a positive thing. I wasn't saying nah. there was a negative. Oh, like, okay. But you became your dad in terms nah. of going, how can I help? Yeah. It wasn't a positive thing when I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> when you see the big fellow walking out of the pretty peripheral out of the corner of your eye, like, oh, shit, I better have a carry Both of you have that uh, shadow fear, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, but go on. No. And it, like the nephews, obviously, you like play footy. Look, I'll guide you. Yeah. But to see my niece doing well and loving it, I'm, it's pr it's a proud moment for me. And I need to, as she develops as a footballer, if that's the path she wants to take in um, WNRL, then I need to be there for her. I yeah. need to teach her a few things. Is What's the point of having an uncle that played first grade or knows the game? Even though her other uncle played good footy, my brother. Yeah then uh, as a family, we need to support her and um, hope she's on the TV one day. Well, I just think it's really exciting. I mean, I think your sister, if she had her time back, I know she was a tennis player. She played mm. pretty handy tennis in her time. I think growing up with you guys as brothers, she would have dominated in the NRLW. Yeah. <clears throat> she wasn't allowed though. She was like, <laughs> wasn't no, allowed. No, yeah, it was no. It was just because she would have hurt you guys. Yeah. She still, she scares us. She still says, you know what Bonnie's like. Yeah. She's uh, she's like my, my dad in a female version. So, <laughs> so she would have dominated. In our house, we're scared of Bonnie first and then Jason. And then <laughs> How, How's um, your nephews going? Yeah, good. They, uh, th yeah, they're going good. You know, they're exactly the same. They like, they train, you know, nonstop, but they actually like love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they go to sleep with their footy. Yeah. Um, and the best thing is like, with my two other brothers playing NRL now, well, they're always around it. Like you're in the sheds, like they think they're best mates with like Gutho and like, <laughs> you know, 
like they get my brother to FaceTime them and stuff like that. That's and um, so they're always are, they're around. It. We're a rugby league family, you know what I mean. So um, yeah, they uh, they're going good. They're, they're half S- Samoan, mm. so um, good genes. Yeah, good genes. Yeah, <laughs> they're so. Um, yeah, I'm I'm interested to see how 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 they develop, but like at their age now, they're like very will high you, level. Will you be involved in their development as footballers? Well, um, <clears throat> look, I'm happy just to sort of support them because they got like my dad, yeah. my other brother, and stuff like that. I'm like, what what can I really con- contribute? You know what I mean? Maybe but a I, like, softer can, touch. Yeah, yeah but I like the game at Brookie against. Oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how uncle used to play. Yeah, that's probably my that's probably my only <laughs> highlight. <laughs> But uh, no, yeah. I just love I just love some, like going and watching them play. They don't need they don't need anything from me, you know. They will eventually, mate. Yeah, yeah, maybe what not to do. <laughs> no, but you'd be really surprised, like, and yeah. how much it's weird, like when they your siblings and brothers and sisters you yeah. don't absorb, but how much your nieces and nephews yeah. want from you and they absorb, mm. and I think you guys have a really special thing that you need mm. to actually appreciate that you have well that this is the relationship with. i have with my with my nephews right because they're at that age i think they're eight now so they're getting a little bit of attitude and stuff like that and i picked them up from school the other day my sister couldn't pick them up and there's a shop up the top it's called the top shop we call it the top shop can you take me they pick them up they see me it's a weak weak link because they because their <laughs> mum tells them they're not allowed to go to the, the the shop after school to get some lollies and i said oh no i gotta go i gotta and one of them said we'll call paul gallon <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. We'll yeah, call Paul Gallon. I went. I went. <laughs> what? I said, All right, we're going. Oh, swear with this guy. We go. Whatever you want. <laughs> like what he wants me, dog. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Wow. Eight so years they, old. They understand. Yeah. Enough. They can't yeah. remember anything from a footy, but they can remember <laughs> getting stopped a couple <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> Well, I think it's funny, oh, like you guys uh, spoke about how you, like your nephews talking about being best friends with mm, Gutho, you mm. were both played with some amazing talent who you consider just mates, mm. but to the rest of the world, yeah, insane talent. Who's probably someone that you can look back on? I mean, for 2004 grand final that you won, yeah. uh, it was probably, was that your debut year? Did I, is that Deb- your, was yeah, that your debut, debut year? year with the Bulldogs? I, th- I think. The first time I really fanboyed was when I was in the Australian team in right. 2006. Um, and getting picked, like, unbelievable. I didn't expect that. But then when you have the – so we go train together, you get fitted out in the kit, yep. all the rest, and then you go into camp and you have a bonding session. And I'm sitting next to Darren Lockyer mm. and we're just, you know, having a, a moment where we're bonding as Australians and that we're going to represent the jersey and – I was I just could not believe that I was going to have that opportunity to play with Darren Lockyer. And even when we like two weeks so we went into camp two weeks before the first test and I wasn't expecting to play but they put me on the edge and I and he'd be just bullet passing these passes ball and I'd be catching like these passes going this is fuck I'm catching a ball from Darren Lockyer. Yeah. And then uh, a few days before the game Ricky Short picked me as a starting lock. And I was, and that was incredible in itself. But I was still a fan. Like after the game, I broke my ankle in the 78th minute, but I went straight up to Darren and said, "Can I have your shorts?" And I've still got them to this day. Wow! Like asking my teammate if yeah. I can have him. I didn't <laughs> want to ask for the jersey. I said, "I'll just take the shorts." You know, I would have taken a left sock off him. You know, like it was. So that was probably the first time I actually felt like wow like you're a part of an a, an elite yeah. crew our 04 side and even 02 like amazing talent but they were my mates they were my teammates but you're talk- when you're talking teammates name drop you're talking about JT you're talking about Braith yeah. Nasta Hazem Amals uh, Hazem Amalsri 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 should have had a red one so there was the bench was Thurston Sunny Bill Roy Asatasi and Corey Hughes wow um, it's mental, you had, and you're fangirling over mm, Darren Lockyer. Your yeah. whole side was fangirl well, material. Roy, Jonathan, and Sonny, and myself came through. We, we weren't Bulldog Juniors, but we started at the club. Well, they started O one. Sonny and I started O two, so I knew them quite well. And then you had Willie Tonga come in. Um, I was in awe of Mace, like because he was just this big character, and you know the big hair and. Be, and a half Polynesian as well. 
he didn't speak to me for the first two years when I came to the club. You had to earn his respect. That would have been icy oh, too. I just wanted to be loved. I'm like, <laughs> you know what I, And But that was the kind of aura that Mace held and that that was the club in general. So we weren't allowed to go in the first grade section um, and you had to earn your right to be around the boys and you had to prove to them that you were worthy of a Bulldog jersey. Yeah. So that was, you know, getting accepted by by that crew was great. But then we went through, you know, blood, sweat, tears together. Marco Mealy, mm. like played first grade yeah, in, well. in the front row when he was 16. Mm. I love Oga. He's the toughest guy I've ever played alongside. And just if you're going to be in the trenches with someone, he'd be one of the first people I'd pick 100%. Um, so that was great. Like I was still fanning out about playing alongside all, the, all these boys in 04. But the moment that really captured my attention was the Australian team. And that was obviously a stacked team as well. And like Hindy was in the back row. Uh, me, Hindmarsh and Bob and Andrew Ryan were the back row. And I'm wow. like, I don't belong here. Like yeah. this is this is bizarre. Thurstow in the halves, Cameron Smith, Greg Inglis, Jared Hayne, myself and Anthony Toops. They, that was our debut for the Australian side. Um, and it's, I still look back now and just think, fuck, what an opportunity to play alongside those players. And it was unfortunate. I, I got injured in every single rep game that I played. It was your ankles, hey? Ankles it, yeah. were no good. Um, just those flat Samoan feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you know, so look, I would have loved to have played in that series because they, I think they beat England in the final test. And I, I know I can always go, you know, the, I've got that one jersey and um, no one could ever take that away from me. But it's still like, it's, it's a little bit painful to yeah. know that I didn't play more than one game. Yeah. And not playing Origin is a massive, that burns deep for me as well. Um, yeah. Origin was one mm -hmm. where I could go through, at the end of, if, if I could give something up, not the Australian jersey or, I don't know what it would be, but I would have loved to play Origin. I think that's the pinnacle of rugby league. I think, and my old man's the same. So dad played city country, so same as you. Yeah. Um, he played in the 76 Australian side mm. and then didn't get picked again. So one Australian jersey, yeah. played in city country a couple of times, but never a New South Wales jersey. Yeah. And he's New South Wales through and through. And even like I love having a beer with my old man and talking footy stories. Like it's one of my favourite things. Mm. But you can tell that stings. It burns. And so that's that's a guy that's a, a couple of years ahead of you. Mm. Exactly the same. Well, I, you, you, I grew up in the 80s, 90s, where you'd play Origin at, at school and you'd have all – and you just I couldn't wait to go home and yeah. watch New South Wales play. Um, and it's surreal because you play for your country – Mm. And that's you're special. not getting paid, yeah, which is is amazing, and you yeah. should never be begrudged by it. But like you're like, but that clash, that one clash, yeah. that's where you you build a real hatred for Queensland. Yeah, it was because of the eighties, nineties, and what you know. I loved Laurie Daly, Freddie Chief. Um, the list goes on and on, and the amount of times Queensland broke my heart, and I'd go to bed crying. For some reason, Lita and my brother and my dad went for Queensland. What? Don't I, they love Wally Lewis. Okay. They'd be in one room and I'd be in, in a room with the girls, mum and the two sisters would be all New South Wales. And if Queensland would score, my brother would come out and try to get <laughs> in. And then I'd start like punching the crap out of him. That's how much I hated Queensland. Mm -hmm. We just grew up just loving the like, origin week. Yeah was the most amazing thing that I could ever think of in when it comes to, to rugby league. Um, so that was the pinnacle for me. That's one jersey that I wanted to get. Yeah. And I was in the 2007 squad. I was that close. And I know if I changed a few things in my life, I probably could have got that jersey. Um, so that that burns. That's the yeah. that's one big regret I have in the game is that I didn't really give my all to potentially try and get that Origin jersey. 